Welcome to this NMRA PCR Coast Division eClinic featuring Earl Gerbevon on wood weathering using chalks. Okay, good morning. So what I'm going to do this morning is talk about using uh, pastels to weather wood. So pastels are just chalks. Don't get all carried away with pastels being kind of funny colors. Uh, back uh, a couple of weeks ago, I showed this building. This is a, uh, a very foreground model. So I went to some extra lengths to put labels on the tanks, on the crates and all that, which are just, you know, signs kind of cut down. But this is what the effect is with uh, using the pastels. So this is not a new technique and it's, it's not mine. It's actually from the Sierra West website. And if you go to, of course, my, there it goes. If you go to the Sierra West scale models website and in the university tab, which you see up here, this is where um. Earl, oh, you're yeah. not sharing your, you, you've lost sharing your screen. We're seeing the test pattern. Okay, let me see if that gets it back. No, still on the test pattern. Yeah, oh, that's the no, display. No, it's the laptop. There we go. Technical issues. Okay, so I'm on the Sierra West website, and you go to the university tab, and this has all of the chalks, the colors that we're going to be using, or the colors he talks about. And we're in the wood family, which is the left side there, the umbers uh, and, the, and the siennas. So if we go back over here live, and we'll talk about the chalks here in a minute. Let me talk to you first about the way that I weather wood. You know, Frank did that excellent clinic a while ago, and he uses some parallel exacto knife blades to put in texture on wood. I like this. This is just a plumbing brush from Home Depot. And the thing that I like about this is the grain pattern, the weathering is random. You know, with Frank's knives, you kind of get the parallel cuts. These are a little more random. And all you do, and I'm working, by the way, on a sheet of glass. And glass works well for this. Just yep. weather it, just flip it over. And you can see I've got a little pile of sawdust here, or maybe you can't, but that's kind of what you want is just putting in some texture. The other thing that I do is work on the ends of the wood, either pick it away with the wire brush, or you can come back in, you know, with an X-Acto knife and kind of cut up the ends a little bit. You know, if you're doing these wood structures, you kind of need to do this because nothing looks worse on a finished structure than, you know, the wood being nice and weathered and then the ends of the boards being square cuts because, you know, over time they kind of decompose a little bit. So to color the wood, it's pretty simple. These are some of the pastels that uh, we talked about from the Sierra West website. This is a number and this is a gray. And all of these avail are available from the Dick Blick website or some other websites. You need to get the, the pastels that are a little bit better quality because they're more pigment and less binder and they work better. And don't buy the sets because you're gonna come up with just a lot of obscene worthless colors that you're just never gonna use. These are, you know, two to four bucks a piece and they'll last pretty much forever. The technique I'm gonna show you is also on the Sierra West website with Brett, Brett uh, doing it. And he's the one that kind of came up with this. But what we're gonna do is just take a knife and scrape. Some of the colors 
on the sheet of glass. Make some just straight alcohol in a brush and just brush it on. And I do both sides of the wood with this. The reason being, I don't have to worry about which is the front or the back and it gives me a little more randomness. So this is kind of what it looks like as it's drying. And what I do is I'll set these aside to dry somewhere off camera, typically. Come back in with some more wood that I've already weathered. Scrape maybe a little more chalk. And you can see over time the glass kind of builds up with more and more of this chalk on it. So you don't need as much. You know, I gave a clinic some years ago uh, on building wood structures using this technique. And some of you who are on this call were there. I gave everybody a couple colors of chalk like this. I had 12 people and I had 12 different colors of wood when it was all done. So the nice thing as opposed to using like the alcohol stains is you can get some different colors. Now, these all look kind of ratty right now. You know, the color is maybe not uh, as blended as you like, but that's easy to fix. And there's a couple of ways to fix it. So I'll let, you know, these would dry pretty quick, but these are some strips that I did earlier. Let me get this out of the way so you can see it better. These are some strips that I did earlier. And you can see the color isn't real blendy. It's kind of splotchy. And that's OK. There's a couple ways to fix it. Either come back with the wire brush, and you can kind of brush in a little more grain with it. Or the really easier way is take a paper towel and just wipe off the excess. And you get, you know, this kind of rotted old wood kind of look. So that's really the technique. It's simple. It's straightforward. The thing that I like about it is it dries quickly. You know, it's the 90% alcohol. And, you know, these were a couple that I just did. And these are pretty much dry and ready to go. And you can always use a hair dryer to, to kind of speed things up. The chalks come in, or the pastels come in a lot of different colors. So, you know, there's some wood colors, kind of like this. But I found these umbers and the gray work, work really well. If I look at my goodie box here, you know, there's some other wood colors if you want to play with the colors of, of wood uh, that you like. The other nice thing with this is it works good. It works OK for plastic. This is a kind of a project I'm working on. And it's all wood. You know, it's board by board. But the doors are plastic. So I what I did is. Uh, primed the plastic and then came back in and did the chalk technique on the plastic. And the colors aren't showing up as good on the camera, but in person, you really can't tell that the door is plastic. So if you would do plastic, these are uh, some plastic uh, six by sixes. I scribe pretty much using Frank's technique. As with plastic, you want to get a lot of grain. And, you know, you can use this chalk almost like a paint. You know, we talked last week, I think Charlie brought up the question about, you know, glue squeeze out and things like that. 
this will paint over most anything. And again, I'm just using some alcohol, grabbing some of this chalk that I had on my piece of glass. And uh, once this dries, it'll be pretty darn close. You can see Here's a dried piece, and here's some of the boards that I did. And the color is pretty darn close. So you can make the plastic look like wood. You gotta play with graining and all that. And we can try it on maybe a little bigger piece of plastic. I primed this with camouflage, which is you know the Rust-Oleum color that everybody uses now in place of earth. So again, once this dries, it will be close to the wood color. And if you don't like that color so much, you want to lighten it, we can get a little more of this kind of gold wood color in there. You know, it's not going to look real wood grainy on this big piece of plastic, but just want to show you, you can get a lot of variations of the colors just by playing with different chalks. So uh, this is, you know, just a demo piece of glass. Let me show you what one of my pieces of glass look like. So this mess is my work palette and you can see I've got a lot of wood colors. I've got some rust colors and all that. And when I go to paint things like detail parts and all that is you know, I've got like a water tank here. And I'll just kind of see what color I want the rust to be. And I can start kind of just picking and choosing my colors. If things come out a little bit too heavy on here, you can come back with uh, some alcohol and kind of water down the chalk too. That's the nice thing when you're using chalk, there's no binder in the chalk. Uh, if you use the Bragdon powders, it has binder. And once it's on there, it's, it's kind of on there. With the chalk, uh, there's no binder. So if you don't like it, just swish it in a thing of alcohol and start over. So again, once this dries, you know, it'll look more like the, the watered down chalk colors. And I can do maybe another presentation on, on the rust colors because there's lots of nice colors and some colors you wouldn't think apply to rust, but uh, they work really good. The one other thing I wanted to mention, when you're doing the alcohol in India ink technique, one of the drawbacks is that the ends of the boards tend to be black because the end grain just soaks up all of the India ink. When you're doing this technique with the chalk, you know, I can come back and I paint the ends with the chalk. And by the way, I do this when I'm building kits, come back and you know touch up all the ends. This will come out the same color as the board, so you don't have these black end pieces which really don't look too good on the models. So, and it'll paint, you know, I'm just kind of painting over it. You can really almost use it as paint. So it'll paint over glue squeeze out. It'll paint over other paint. Uh, it's kind of really nice technique. So here what do you again do to is, clean it up if it gets uh, too dark on the ends? Sorry, that again, Seth? I, uh, what do you do to, is, is there a technique to recover from getting it too dark on the ends? With the chalk? Yeah. Uh, typically more alcohol, just keep, you know. Just dilute it out? Just keep diluting it out. Ah. If, if you think it's too dark. Hey, <laughs> here are your proofs. 
Oh. So that, <laughs> that's it's kind of you. the technique. Okay. Yeah, I use this, uh, like I said, for um, you know, a lot of the wood craftsman kits I do. And by the way, you know, this isn't just for wood craftsman kits. This works good for anything wood, for loading docks. You know, there's a lot of different applications for for this. And you can play with, you know, the colors a little bit. You know, the framing you can see in here is a slightly different color than the wood just to show that it's different. And with the different colors of pastels out there, you're not limited to what, you know, only what Joel Bragdon has. You can really get some variations, which are nice. Earl? Yeah. It it looks like you get a dead flat finish as well. Is that correct? Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, you get a dead flat finish. Okay, Phil, if you want to unspotlight me. There you go. We'll just open it up for discussions. Yeah, a quick question, Earl. When the uh, pastels and uh, when the alcohol dries and the pastel dries, you don't use a fixative at any in terms of, you know, is the pastel going to come off on your fingers after you no. move the model around? You know, it might if you handled it a lot. Let me, let me try. This is what I just did, right? This piece here. So let me, so it'll, it'll come off a little bit. When it's in the wood, not so much. If you're, if you're gonna handle something a lot, you probably want a fixative but normally I don't bother. Earl, Dave Connery, another question off topic a little bit, but when you're building those structures, do you build them on any kind of a base? Uh, I, I, what do you mean by a base? I don't know how to answer. I don't know what you're... Well, do you... Do you do you have a, a base that you build the structure on and then set the base in the layout or do you just build the structure and set the structure uh, on the layout uh, oh, ground? I understand. I understand. It, it depends on the structure. You know, this one, you know, that I've been showing, you know, is very foreground model. You know, it's it's stands on its own. If there's a lot of loading docks, there are other little V guys hanging off it. I might put it on the base. I kind of don't like the bases because they're hard to blend into the layout afterward. Thank you. Um, if you do use an overcoat, like say dull coat or something similar, does that change the color of the chalks that you've used? I don't. I don't know, Paul. I haven't overcoated it that much. I've got some of the uh, Grumbacher, or however you pronounce it, fixatives that they use in the art world. Mm -hmm. And that supposedly doesn't dilute the chalk color so much. But, you know, for the buildings, I haven't really been dull coating. I am in the process of getting ready to do some freight car weathering. And I'm going to use this and uh, we'll see if I need to spray a fixative or not. Yeah, it, that really concerns me because as you as I've shown before, all of my buildings are removable and they get handled a lot. So I need something to prevent that from happening. Yeah, but you're typically picking them up by the edges of the roof or something, right? You're not rubbing your fingers all over them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, you know, this little structure that I've had here, I've been, you know, handling it and playing with it for, you know, a month and a half now. And I really haven't had any chalk come off that's measurable. Uh, Once it's I, in the wood, it's stuck. I use some Bragdon chalks to put weathering on an ON30 engine that gets handled quite a bit, you know, because the mods are on and off. And it lasted about a year, year and a half. And now most, a lot of it's gone. It just rubs off if you don't seal it. Even the Bragdons do off of plastic to, from what I've seen. Yeah, they all do to some degree. So the other thing, Earl, I, I, I was actually trying something similar, but I found a micro grater at the dollar store and had tried that instead of using the knife. 
And that seems to work pretty reasonably well because I was doing a huge volume for a pier of wood. So, uh, you know, doing, you know, 18 inch long pieces, eight or 10 at a time of uh, quarter by eighth inch wood. And so it actually, it's one of those, you know, little, little micro graders that you just rub on it, cut the little sliding slivers off just like a knife. Yeah, especially in those scale, you have a lot more volume to, or area to cover. <laughs> yep. But that's the difference, you know, one of the differences between O and HO, you know, like a Frank's clinic, he went to the trouble of doing knot holes and things like that, but Frank works mostly in O scale and those things show up in O scale. In HO, I've done it and they just, they get lost and I don't do much of that anymore. I'm more concerned, you know, with the board ends because those show up quite a bit. I guess in N scale, I've found you really don't have to rough it up that much on real wood either to have scale grain. Yeah, I think any scale grain you do on N scale is too big. Yeah. I think, you know, even with my plumbing brush here, you know, that I, I showed you earlier, you know, the, the grain is probably too much for HO if you look at it, but if you don't overdo the grain a little bit, it's too smooth, everything looks like metal and it doesn't look like wood anymore. Yeah. So you have to exaggerate the grain a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Well, thanks, Earl. That was, that was great. Um, I think got a lot of great info there and techniques to try. A uh, big hand from everyone. We'll all hit the reaction button and give you applause. You too. Bye now. Thank you.